what kind of music did we do and what's our identity? What was it about those two songs that really resonated with you guys? Uh, I think we were looking for really fun, grooving songs that empowered Steven over here to really take over and just have a lot of fun and stylize the songs. And those two of the songs that we had uh, sung through were the ones that just really uh, stuck with us. They, they, they felt uh, not necessarily easy, but they felt like they fit us really well. Mm -hmm. Caleb, did you all feel any pressure to have to do a ballad and an up tune? Or? No, so funny enough, we actually had a ballad arranged for us. Uh, well, it was arranged for The Simple Life, which was a quartet Kevin was in last year. Mm -hmm. And they ended up not, they weren't able to sing it. And so Melody Hine was the one who arranged it. And we took it on and we were trying to sing it and trying to, you know, fill all the parts. And uh, we started to work really hard on it and it felt like it was going in a good direction. And then just one rehearsal, we all sat together and we were like, you know, I feel like we're trying to put a square peg through a circle hole. It's not really fitting. So uh, we talked to Rick Spencer, who's one of our main coaches, and we were like, you know, what should we do? And he just said, I think y'all should just go out there with these two. Y'all sing them really well, and you know, you can get the job done that way. So that's what we were trying to gun for, at least. Yeah, I think for any uh, younger guys who might be watching this particular episode, uh, I know when I first joined Barbershop, because most quartets did, like a ballad and an up to, I thought, yeah. well, that's got to be a rule right. somewhere. <laughs> but then I would see some quartets. I remember one of my first conventions, Power play came out and sang two ballads, mm -hmm. and then Michigan Jake, they hardly sing any ballads, you know? <laughs> they just did what was uh, good for them, you know, what maximized, uh, what maximized their abilities. Now, I think anytime uh, people see a collegiate quartet or a next-gen varsity quartet, one of the questions they have is, are any of these guys really in college? So I'm curious to hear a little bit about your educational background. So we'll start down here on this end. All right, so I, I went to the University of Tennessee for about three years from 2014 to 2017 and I am no longer in school, hope to get back in mm -hmm. eventually, but I was a vocal performance major and it was a great time, learned a lot, but I am no longer in school. That's right, but you were studying uh, vocal performance. <coughs> yeah, doing school. a lot of opera and stuff. That's fantastic. How about you, Kevin? Yeah, so I actually uh, started university late and then I took time off and now I'm actually back and I'm in my last semester, so I'm graduating in a degree of music ed. What school are you graduating from? Middle Tennessee State University in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And for our UT guy here, isn't it true that Middle Tennessee is actually the largest state university in Tennessee, isn't that? Yes. Is it yes. the largest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just as a Kentucky fan, I lose every opportunity to stick it to Tennessee. So I'll try to keep that. I'll try to keep that up. I went to James Madison University where I started as a freshman and played tennis there and then decided I wanted to switch tennis programs and went to Harmony University's new home, Belmont University. Um, got my undergrad there in accounting and then uh, graduated in 2018 in the spring and have since started to pursue my master's in business administration at USF. Fantastic. And uh, uh, we'll have to check the records here, but I think Stephen may be our first official Division I collegiate athlete we have ever interviewed here on Shop Chat. Yes. yes. He's really good Pretty at sports. Cool. That's right. Very <laughs> good. He sports is it up. And uh, Caleb, how about you? Uh, so I started out at Belmont University where Stephen got his undergrad at. I was a music major for three semesters or two semesters there. I went and ended up transferring to Lee University in my sophomore year. And uh, since then, I've trained or switched majors a couple more times. But now I'm settled in. I'm doing a pastoral ministry major there, and I'm set to graduate in December of 2020. Now, Lee University is the home of the Voices of Lee, and yes. of course, uh, our international champs uh, from 2002, uh, the Four Voices. Are they really as big a deal there as they talk like they are? I mean, whenever there's something to do at Lee University, it's always going to be four voices, yeah. of course. But it's cool like to have those guys and to have that kind of background where you know they really support their, their singers and they support, you know, if they do something really cool, they're going to, you know, shout you out for it and let yeah. the community know that, hey, we got an international champ. We should, you know, celebrate that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean... They're good guys, but definitely it's almost like it's a super small town because whenever something's going on and there needs to be music, it's like, four voices, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now, um, a lot of guys who compete in this particular contest are like new to barbershop into the contest, but that's not true with you guys. All of you all had already had barbershop experience. Um, Caleb, what was your uh, initial barbershop experience? So my initial barbershop experience actually came from what many people, many young people come in through is the Harmony Explosion Camps or Harper Youth Harmony Camps, whatever you want to call them. 
Um, but I was from the Dixie District, of course, so I got to work closely with Clay and Becky Hine and all those guys. And of course, Dusty came in and was a clinician a couple of years. But uh, that's where I kind of came and was brought up in barbershop. And I did that camp for God, four, five, six years almost, back to back to back. And so it was mm -hmm. just, it was a really, really just a merciful experience for me to still, you know, learn all I've learned now. So that's great. Stephen, how about you? So I joined Chorus on a whim the second semester of my junior year in high school, just because my friend wanted me to join. And who other's class do I join than Debbie Cleveland's class? And uh, one day we were checking out different types of music and she played vocal spectrum. And I said, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And she said, you probably will never do that, but <laughs> you can do this. And that's how I got in barbershop. So. <laughs> Always good to see Debbie encouraging the young people of America here, <laughs> shattering their dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, fantastic. Oh, that's, that's great. And then Kevin, how about you? Yeah, so I went to an arts high school and they had a mentoring program where every incoming freshman would get a senior to, sh to like show them the ropes for the first few uh, weeks of class. And my mentor was actually Eddie Mejia, who is now the tenor of uh, Studio. Studio 4. Yeah, so I've known him for a very long time. He, uh, just in the very first week of school, he heard me sing, as well as my friend Christian Diaz, who's in Midtown. And he, he told both of us, he was like, you should come sing barbershop, come, come to the Miami It's Chorus Rehearsal. And so the two of us went to go check it out with another friend, Andrew Luhan, and the three of us were hooked instantly. I mean, since that day in ninth grade, I have not stopped singing barbershop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is really wonderful. And uh, fun fact, the uh, Dixie Harmony Explosion Camp that Caleb went to, uh, for two of the years that he, intend he attended my quartet, the Academy, was the teaching quartet there. Oh, so that's cool. where I actually first met Caleb, was teaching him there. Yeah. And then... <laughs> and another fun fact, the first day I ever saw a barbershop quartet live, it was the Academy in Tampa, oh. at another Harmony Explosion event. Yeah. So. So that's why I've known these two for quite a while. And, uh, He's our dad. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> little, little did you know. Yeah. The, the I actually follow these kids. <laughs> the, the Academy, a <laughs> mere stepping stone <laughs> to future glory. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so, yeah. great. And Harrison, how about you? How did you get in, in barbershop? Uh, so it wasn't really like any of them. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't know any of them either. Uh, I uh, didn't start singing until I was like 15 or 16. I had always been in band. and. What did you play? I was a drummer my whole life. Started playing when I was eight, so I did drum line, I did percussion, I did all that stuff. I was really into the band. But still, never a musician until you started. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's fair. That's pretty fair. Uh, but uh, my choir director at my high school, like in ninth grade, heard me talk in the hallway and just asked if I would want to sing, and I was like, sure. And then I joined a, a chorus and in school and then they started a barbershop course outside of school with uh, Lee Franks was, uh, was starting this, a Dixie guy and uh, I joined and I mean it was it was fun and then it, it took me a couple years to get hooked but I think it was midwinter in 2013 and Ringmasters was there, Crossroads was there and I mean that's that's when I really was like I got you. this is now this is stuff. have you always had this also profundo voice. And I wouldn't call it that, but, uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, now I'm around like eh, 13 or 14. Because I would imagine if I was a high school choir teacher, and usually they're desperate for guys, and especially basses, if they heard you talking, they'd probably no, he, chloroform you right in there. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> he scooped me up pretty fast. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah that's the best choice I ever made in my life. Uh, so. That's great. Very good. So um, I'm really curious. Uh, it's hard enough for uh, older folks who are quartetting to pull off a long distance thing. How does uh, a varsity quartet, how have you all been able to manage to rehearse to prepare leading up to contest last year? Stephen, you want to talk a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah. Um, so at first we kind of took it as uh, an expense to ourselves, an investment in the, in the quartet. And um, these two would drive to Nashville and we would all pitch in to fly me up to Nashville mm -hmm. and um, we started then being a little more proactive reaching out to choruses reaching out to youth programs and just saying hey we'd love to do something for you whether it be a show whether it be a camp whether it be instructors whatever and um, that being proactive has gotten us a couple more gigs and then obviously after winning you get a little a little bit more of gigs so um, whenever we are at a gig we try to rehearse as much as we can and we still have some fun but we try to we try to get the work in too. So. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. Well, this is definitely the kind of hobby that the more you give, the more you're going to get. And so uh, putting yourselves out there to be put to work just gives you that kind of opportunity. And then it kind of 
snowballs out, which is a good way for this thing to happen. So I would imagine that uh, once every next gen uh, quartet reaches the point where either you've won or everybody has aged out, you have to make a decision. Uh, do we go on, and as we colloquially say in barbershop, and compete in the big boy contest? <laughs> so, uh, Kevin, have you all talked about what your future would be as a quartet? Yeah, we are moving on. In fact, we'll be back here in this same hotel for the uh, fall contest. Actually, no, sorry. Scratch that. We changed our plans very recently. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to be at the Nixie District Fall Convention in uh, Ringgold. Right. So the big yes, takeaway right. there is Wildfire hates the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> take right. Well, I guess that is a big decision to make, but three of you uh, live in the Dixie District, yes. so I suppose yeah, this yeah, yeah. your reason for yeah. that. Yeah. Very cool. So you guys are going to be competing in the, in the fall contest That's right, in yeah. Dixie. That's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, what's, uh, what else is on the calendar for you guys uh, over the next few months? Well, we've got a few performances lined up, a few more camps in the summer. We've got some arrangements being worked on for us, and uh, we're going to go all in and try to see how far we can get at next year's International. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, I'm curious if people wanted to follow you guys, do you all have uh, social media? That uh, how, What's our marketing guy down here? <laughs> what's he got here? Check us out on uh, Wildfire on Facebook. Uh, that's that's all we got for now. We might make an Instagram. We might make a website someday. But right now, just check us out on Facebook, and you can find everything you need. For us. And I can't help but notice these incredibly stylish hats yes. that uh, our tenor and bass are wearing here. If people wanted to get a hold of any wildfire merch, what do you have on offer, and how could they do that? Yeah, um, just reach out to us on our Facebook page. Uh, we have a link set up for shirts. Um, where you can jot down all your information, shipping details, or if you'll ever pick it up from us in person. Uh, we have shirts and we have hats. So if we get more demand for hats, we'll make some more hats. But the hats just started as we wanted something to wear for the sun at LDJ. <laughs> 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 well, now as it turns out, we're going to need raincoats, it looks like, more than those hats. I can vouch these guys produce shirts of such customer demand, they even made one that can fit me. <laughs> and it was delivered in person, so I can vouch for their customer service in that regard. We care. That's right. <laughs> we just care. Well guys, yeah. thank you all so much for taking on I know this is a fun weekend, and it's a busy weekend, and I take time to be with us on Shock Chat, and it really means a lot to us. And uh, we have a little tradition around here where we have a little Shop Chat tag. We'd like to ask our guests to uh, send us out on, so would you guys do that for us, please? Ready? Mm -hmm. yeah. Shop Chat! Shop Chat! Wildfire, thank you so very much <laughs> for being with us. And thank you for joining us on this episode of Shop Chat. Shop Chat! Shop